I feel there are companies that focus on advanced tools, but again, neglect critical elements like robust data governance, um, integration and strategy alignment. Um, there are several claims which on the surface seem very powerful, but in reality um, can be fundamentally flawed. And, and I'll share three um, claims which I've come across relatively often. I would say the the <clears throat> the real challenge is creating a seamless connected shopper experience, not just adding more digital tools. Um, in some respects, there can be an over reliance on technology without fixing the core issues. So, for example, um, disjointed online and in store experiences, inaccurate inventory or order fulfillment, um, fragmented customer support, impersonal shopping experiences cumbersome or complex checkout and return processes. Retailers can resolve these um, with some basic steps. And again, these are not anything new, but sometimes it's important just to focus on the basics and get the fundamentals right. For example, starting with customer journey mapping, identifying the pain points from product discovery to post-purchase support. Importantly, using technology to enable not complicate the experience. So ensuring AI, automation and data enhance, not disrupt the customer journey. Unifying inventory and order management, um, integrating customer support across all of your channels, simplifying checkout and returns. This should all be focused on creating a truly uh, connected retail experiences. Customers should be able to move effortlessly between online, mobile, and in-store shopping with every interaction being like part of a really unified brand experiences. And so retailers and, and brands must firstly identify and then look to fix fundamental journey gaps. And that's where technology should be an enabler, not the be all and end all. Technology is not the panacea to everything, um, but it can be used to enable and enhance but the important thing is to understand what is the status quo? What is the existing lay of the land? Where are those bottlenecks? Uh, where are those breakages in the customer experience? Based on that, then deciding what is the best and most suited technology that can be implemented in order to solve that specific problem. So it's not just about layering sophisticated technology. It's about truly putting the customer at the center identifying the needs, the pain points, and then how do you fill those gaps with the use of, of technology? We typically take the approach of less is more. You know, take a less is more uh, approach, identifying, again, what are the fundamental gaps and then how do you block those gaps? I don't get frustrated often. I, I'm generally quite a calm <laughs> person, um, but... One, one misconception about omnichannel strategies that, that is frustrating, I guess, um, is the belief that omnichannel simply means being present on multiple platforms. Many retailers or brands or businesses think that as long as they have a website, mobile app, social media, physical stores, they've ticked all the omnichannel boxes. They've, they've achieved omnichannel success. In reality, True Omnichannel is about seamless integration between these channels. It's not just about having multiple touch points, but it's ensuring that these touch points work together without friction. And so many brands, and back to our previous um, conversation, many brands focus too much on adding channels or adding technology rather than connecting them. Um, and, and the result of this is a really disjointed experience where customers face inconsistent information. They have to repeat themselves across support channels. Uh, they struggle with things like mismatched inventory between online um, and in store. And so the best omnichannel strategies that we see really prioritize customer experience before adding, adding layers of, of redundant channels or implementing advanced technologies with no clear strategy around uh, what the customer needs um, and what inspires those customers.
Now, this is quite a philosophical question, um, but I, I'd say generally I don't feel we're all at a point where there is an over-reliance on algorithms at the expense of human intuition. Well, at least I can speak for my data science teams and my business intelligence teams in that we still ensure there's the right balance between combining AI capabilities and human intuition. And of course, frankly speaking, common sense, you know, to create a well-rounded customer centric strategy. And that's because uh, as a team, we've recognized a few important points. The first is that there's no doubt that AI and algorithms have powerful, uh, powerful tools for processing vast amounts of, of data, identifying patterns, um, generating actionable insights with speed and precision. However, algorithms rely on the quality of data that they're trained on and often lack the ability to understand context, nuance, or human emotions. Well, at least now they do. Maybe in the future, they will consider those uh, additional points. A big part of our business, being a loyalty agency, is predicting shopper behavior, um, forecasting the performance of the campaigns. Um, and whilst we use a number of, of projection algorithms fueled by AI, we've learned firsthand that there requires that human intervention for various checks and balances to ensure context and nuance are picked up. And so for us, human expertise is essential to interpret AI-driven insights, um, challenge assumptions, and incorporate empathy and strategic thinking into decision making. And, and so it's it's this synergy that ensures decisions are both data driven and importantly, contextually relevant in order to maximize the value for our clients and their customers with the campaigns and the programs that, that we run. I feel there are companies that focus on advanced tools, but again, neglect critical elements like robust data governance, um, integration and strategy alignment. Um, there are several claims which on the surface seem very powerful, but in reality um, can be fundamentally flawed. And, and I'll share three um, claims which I've come across relatively often. The first is, um, AI and analytics tools guarantee better decision-making. Um, as we've just discussed previously, many companies fail to address the foundational issues, which is poor data quality. AI and analytics are only as good as the data they process and flawed and incomplete data leads to inaccurate insights. The second claim is around real-time analytics being fully operational and the reality is that whilst this is marketed as a game changer, real-time analytics often struggles with a lot of outdated systems and siloed data. So many businesses are still unable to leverage true real-time analytics and insights due to their architectural limitations, data quality issues, and simply a lack of strategy of how to use and action real-time data. Uh, and then the third claim is... Uh, data democratization being achieved across an organization or uh, we are a data-driven business. I'm sure many have heard uh, that claim. The reality is, again, despite those claims, um, empowering all employees with data access, um, many organizations do fail to provide adequate tools for training. Um, lack of certification programs internally, lack of upskilling the, the, the workforce, whether it be in their commercial capacities or operational capacities, leaving non-technical users really unable to fully leverage analytics. So these, these for me are the, the top three claims which I've come across, which maybe in reality aren't, uh, aren't as true as they may seem to be. Ultimately, I feel it's, it's necessary to balance leveraging customer insights whilst respecting privacy and maintaining trust. That's really the key. And this cadences down into a number of important principles. So for example, transparency, always ensuring customers know what data is being collected, how it will be used, and the benefits that they will receive. Consent, 
only collecting data with explicit informed consent, collecting only the data necessary to achieve specific business objectives and business goals, using data strictly for its intended purposes. Security seems like a, an obvious one. Um, you know, prioritizing robust security measures to protect customer data from breaches or misuse. And in an era now where organizations are becoming obsessed with hyper-personalization, there's also a need to respect customer privacy, you know, avoiding practices that feel intrusive, such as over-personalization or tracking unrelated behaviors. And finally, to me, it's all about using trust as a guiding principle. Ask yourself, does this action build or erode customer trust? The first game-changing innovation, um, I would say, in the, in the loyalty space um, is in the area of um, looking at behavioral loyalty. Traditional loyalty is all about rewarding customers for their spend, what we call transactional loyalty. We're seeing a shift where retailers are now turning to solutions that can reward shoppers beyond their spend. That is rewarding customers for any brand interaction or any brand engagement, like watching engaging ad content, engaging with social media, instant win games, quizzes, trivia, and so on. And so by creating different missions and challenges or gamified experiences for customers, Retailers and brands can start to deliver value out of store and beyond the wallet, beyond the transaction, to build a deeper relationship with their customers. As many different behaviors are being rewarded, not just spend, customers can realize more value, whilst for the retailer, they can use these solutions to collect valuable zero-party data, data that comes directly from the customer through completing these different challenges, but also monetizing these solutions with their endemic and non-endemic um, partners, boosting retail media performance. So for us, one of the, the big innovations that we're betting on um, as a result of seeing shifts in the market is this concept of behavioral loyalty, rewarding all behaviors, not just spend. The second innovation um, in retail and data analytics is of course around AI-driven predictive and prescriptive analytics. Um, we're seeing that um, predictive analytics will evolve to not only forecast customer behavior, but also prescribe specific actions businesses should take to enhance the customer experience. This in turn will then enable hyper-personalization, real-time interactions across channels, which ultimately is aimed at improving customer satisfaction, satisfaction and loyalty. Though again, the caveat um, is those points we discussed earlier. To do so, you need to have optimized data quality, you need to have the right um, uh, data governance policies and frameworks in place. Um, there's a robust data strategy in place, and of course, the infrastructure is set up. And the third, um, I wouldn't say it's an innovation, but it's certainly a trend um, and an important consideration is data mesh for seamless integration. You know, this is all about a data architecture that decentralizes data ownership and management, enabling organizations to, to handle their data more efficiently and at scale. From a personal perspective, you know, working with platforms like Fabric or Data Cloud, um, which use these data mesh principles, support that scalability, flexibility and adaptability, improve collaboration, uh, fast time to value, which is an important one, cost efficiencies. And so having that right data infrastructure in place will then fuel the engines of omnichannel retail, customer experience and, and satisfaction, retail performance, and so on. And so, again, these, these are my top three big bets. Um, behavioral loyalty, rewarding customers um, beyond the transaction, AI in uh, predictive uh, and prescriptive analytics, uh, and data mesh for seamless integration. They're not groundbreaking. We're seeing a lot of things happening today in these areas, but I think they're fundamentals, both today and tomorrow.